time to the 25th Sunday in ordinary time we have been. Even the most faithful Christians can fall prey to the temptation of pursuing wrongly understood greatness. Today's liturgy of the word concentrates on this danger, offering caution about pursuing false greatness and showing where and how true greatness can be found. Our theme is Craving for Greatness. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus and his disciples went on from the mountain and passed through Galilee. And he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel reading combines two distinct passages which brilliantly portray two types of greatness. In the first part, Jesus makes his second passion prediction. He teaches the disciples about his commitment to carry out his mission to the point of dying on the cross. The disciples neither understood nor sought an explanation of this teaching. The reason for their indifference becomes evident in the second part of today's passage. In this second part, Jesus and the disciples arrive in Capernaum. Most of the disciples were from this town. They came home on the way they argued about who among them was the greatest. As they approached their hometown, they likely wanted to establish who had the greatest success. Indeed, they intended to boast about their accomplishments, their friends and families. Ironically, as Jesus talked about his self-sacrifice, they were arguing about rank and importance. Without explicitly criticizing them, Jesus uses this shameful incident to teach them about true greatness. First, greatness means service, and such a view turns the entire social order of the day on its head. In the view of the disciples and the society they lived in, greatness meant being served, not serving. Second, discipleship requires welcoming children. Again, such behavior differs from the prevalent social order and practices, where children like servants had the lowest social status and no rights. Their lives depended entirely on the choices and the decisions made by their fathers. They were the last to be fed and could be freely given away by their parents as servants or slaves. Welcoming a child meant extending one's care to those not formally entitled to it. Jesus teaches that true greatness consists of protecting and uplifting those without anyone to rely upon. 
The disciples' quest for greatness was utterly misguided, as they sought to establish a hierarchy of importance in their group. But true greatness in God's kingdom implies self-sacrifice, service, and concern for the others. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.